Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel where today I have great news for owners of the Zwift Hub Smart Trainer with Zwift this week finally releasing the much anticipated firmware that includes auto calibration or auto spin down. Now around six weeks ago, Zwift had a limited rollout of firmware version 4.0. This week they've started the phase rollout to everybody with 4.0.1. The same firmware with just a few little tweaks. Okay, pulling up the details here over on the Zwift forums. To update the firmware, super easy. Just open the Zwift Companion app on your mobile. You'll see a prompt and the firmware will simply install after about 30 seconds or so. If you have trouble finding that, you can also check for the firmware update by going to more Zwift hardware through to the trainer and it should check your trainer there. Now what's included in version 4.0 and also 4.01 Auto calibration, which optimizes the accuracy of the power reading from your Zwift hub, and it happens automatically during rides. Now this works similarly to a spin down calibration, and the scenario is, and the beauty of this, is that it takes place on the trainer itself, so it's not dependent on Zwift. If you're riding Ruby, RGT, trainer road, anything, and hit these checkboxes for this to take place, the trainer will do an auto calibration. And that is, after the first minute of riding, auto calibration will be triggered at any moment during your activity when you coast for at least five seconds from a speed of at least 15 k's per hour or 10 miles per hour. Now that speed is the virtual flywheel speed, not your speed in game on any virtual platform you're riding. So it's that flywheel speed that's ticking over. So next time you're pausing for a rest, freewheeling on a downhill or coasting to the stop at the end of a ride, your Zwift hub will be automatically optimizing itself. Now I've thought about a number of scenarios where this may not work and trainer road comes to mind where you're not coasting very much at all in erg mode. However, at the end of your ride, when you stop pedaling, if that flywheel speeds above 15 k's an hour or 10 miles per hour, your Zwift hub will do the auto calibration. Now some changes made to 4.0.1, which started the phase rollout as of March 27th, uh, they fixed a heart rate pairing bug. So if you had a heart rate bridge to your Zwift hub, that connection remains in place with this update and calibration accuracy improvements. So a few minor tweaks over 4.0. And listed here, 4.0.1 is available today. If you're already on the 4.0 firmware, which was a small handful of owners there, and 4.0.1 will roll out in phases if you're using 3.9 firmware. Given we're a few days into this phase rollout, I'll pull up the Zwift forums here and look at some user feedback of those who have upgraded. Uh, Michael here asked the great question early on, is it safe to install? And replies here from a few people. Jesse said he upgraded from 3.9 to 4.0.1, finished running tour of Whitopia and it feels much smoother on steeper climbs, feels a bit tougher, maybe because he's still sore from a big ride, uh, feels a bit more responsive too, not sure. However, Jesse is happy. Now, I don't think there's any changes here to the gradient simulation, the ride feel or anything like that. However, if it's doing good things for Jesse, it's all good. Michael then must have updated, works perfectly. Another Michael, uh, powered on the Zwift Hub, opened up the companion app, showed 4.0.1 available, ran the upgrade process, much quicker to upgrade, solid blue light, all good, closed the companion app, et cetera, et cetera. Worked for me too, excellent. And Chris here, had my replacement hub for only two months now, wasn't offered the firmware for 4.0, really hoping when can, blah, blah, blah. when can I expect 4.0.1. Chris is probably part of the fakes rollout. So Chris, hold back a few days and recheck again, it should be there. So the limited user feedback is good. Now onto my testing of this. Because as I say, trust but verify, and verify I did. Here's a ride that I did early on with 4.0, trying to break it. Now I did a number of things to mess with the calibration of the trainer, and look, to be honest, I couldn't do it. I tried all the tricks in the book. There's a few start and stops discrepancies here with a recording, so the numbers are a little bit different there, but you can see that's looking pretty good up against the Asio Majuo. So I was tearing my hair out, or what's left of it, just around the sides, and I did manage to break the calibration. Unfortunately, I couldn't repeat it. However, here is the broken calibration, and I'd love to be able to repeat this because I'd be able to dive a little further into it. However, I couldn't. This took an hour and a half to finally get done, and not a break that I would recommend anybody trying to do, not that I could replicate it, not that Zwift could replicate it either. I sent them this over, um, and they were scratching their heads too. However, what we have here on screen is the Zwift hub reading around 50 watts lower than the Asioma Duos which is not what you want. You want it to read 50 watts high. Maybe, just don't cheat in races with that. <laughs> After noting that it was reading 50 watts low, I stopped and did the minimal five second coast and started spinning up again. And you can see here, the numbers get a lot closer. Not as close as what I'd want though. So again, stopped, coasted for the minimum five seconds with the flywheel speed above 15 k's an hour. And again, those numbers come even closer again. So indicating that the auto coloration is doing its job. Now at the end of that ride, I did a manual calibration just to make sure everything is in check and did an extensive number of follow-up rides, all while trying to break that calibration 
and I couldn't do it. So the final ride here with 4.0.1 on March 18th, just the other day, we have the Zwift Hub up against the Asioma Duos. There's an hour and 23 minutes here. Now at the start, a little bit of warm up here from the trainer, but from then on, it's looking really, really good for a lot of overs and unders. And look, the power is there within 0.01 of a watt. So within plus or minus 1% from the Asioma Duos, plus or minus 2% from the, uh, the Zwift Hub. That's uh, looking pretty damn good to me. Now, does this impact any of the other issues that I've seen with this trainer when really going through the data with a fine tooth comb? No, it doesn't. However, it will do that auto calibration. So let's say you're going up Elta Zwift, Ventop, et cetera, and you see any changes in power numbers. If you've got the time, you can do a spin down by going in the other direction, getting that flywheel spun up, coasting for a little bit, spinning around, or you can just wait till you get to the top, wait for that coasting section and the trainer will do its thing. So after six months, super cool to see this update from Zwift, super cool to see it working under my test conditions, and I'm also keen to see how it goes when it starts rolling out to all Zwift Hub owners, of which there are quite a few. Alrighty, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. As always, if you found this informative or found it entertaining, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel and be across more videos posted here, and we shall see you soon.